Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I was surfing the internet and I came across K4SWL Thomas's website where he had this Go Box for the Elecraft KX1. And you know me, I love Go Boxes, so I had to build it. Grabbed some parts that I had and put it all together. Found some parts online that I think might be interesting additions to this kit. I even found the reference guide on Elecraft's website that was in the top of his Go Box. Thomas said that he could not find the original creator of the kit. Uh, he said that he bought it on eBay. There is a link to Thomas's article in the description down below. Um, the person on eBay wasn't the person that built the kit either. So I guess I gotta go in from scratch and build this thing out myself. Let's get after it. First thing I wanna do is get myself some antenna wire. I chose red and black BN Tech Go antenna wire. This is the same stuff that we use on our car antennas, and I love it because it does not tangle up. It is very easy to work with. It doesn't have any memory in it. And this stuff is actually pretty small, so it fits inside this Go box. After that, I needed some way to attach this to the radio. You know those typical BNC <laughs> Cobra head connectors, the binding post adapters, whatever your favorite terminology is for these things. It's the BNC connector that goes into the side of the radio and then it has the red and the black port. There's a lot of different ways you can use this thing. And here's a nice option for you. Binding posts that you get on Amazon, I'll leave a link down below for you, fit right into the end of these as if they were made for this because, well, because they are. So I chose to put this on the end of the BN Tech Go wire and let's get after that too. These binding posts that you use have a screw in the side so you can screw the wire in. However, this wire is very thin and it's very thin on purpose and it's okay that it's very thin. So what I did was I screwed it in place and then I also applied a very, very healthy dose of solder to hold it in place as well. I don't know how well it's gonna hold up over time, but worst case scenario, I fix it and put new wire on. That's what Hammond's all about. The gentleman that created the Go Box in Thomas's eBay find used cardboard to wind his wires around. That's a great idea. I just wanted something a little different. So I got these things. These are called turtles and you've opened them up like they're shown here in the picture and wrap your wire around them and close them back down. And I think they're gonna work out really well. We'll see. Thinking fourth dimensionally here, it would actually be really smart if I left the connector on the outside and could plug it into the radio and then walk away from the radio with the antenna element. So I've got to unwind all this wire again in order to get to the, the, the tail end of the cable. Let's test fit these things in the radio. It's a pretty snug fit, but that's exactly what we want. It's gonna get a little bit easier over time You'll see, it at the, you'll see it as the video goes on farther, it gets pretty easy to do. But you want it to be just a little snug. So let's talk about power. There are a lot of different ways to power this radio. It has an internal battery setup that takes six AAA batteries. Six AAA batteries is nine volts. It'll probably run fine off of nine volts. Let's try it. Well, after careful investigation, that was a failure. It looks like the internal battery connector is not working at all. So I need to get that fixed, but that's not gonna stop me from making this kit. I've got a couple of other battery tricks up my sleeve. So I got some 18650s here. Let me get these things plugged in. I have a battery charger, two 18650s, and then I have a battery hookup tray with a 5525 barrel jack on the end of it. Should work fine for this application. Oh, low battery. Guess I gotta get these things charged up. So for those of you that are curious about how much this thing weighs, about two pounds, two ounces. Not too bad. You never know where you're gonna find ham radio. It turns out that the campsite that I was staying at in Tennessee while I was putting this kit together, the guy was a ham. This is his old ham shack with his tower. I went over and took a look. The ham shack itself is actually empty. I found out from the owner of the campground that he went silent key and I guess they cleaned everything out and took care of it, but they left all the towers up. There's a couple of towers all over this property with a bunch of different antennas on them. Looks like he had a lot of fun. Okay, so the two 18650s at best are gonna be four and a half volts. Four and a half volts times two is nine volts. That's the same as the internal. This thing will run off of 12 volts. It'll probably either run longer or it'll put out more power. Who knows, but I've got a 12 volt battery tray. I'm gonna try that too. Okay, so the thing about battery trays, you gotta turn them on in order for them to put power out. Whoops. Here we have the finished go box. You guys saw all the work that I was doing to get to this point, and now we are at this point. Let's see what's inside. I need some double-sided stick tape. I do not have any with me, but that would get that stuck in the top lid. That is the KX1 quick reference guide, and there is a link in the description down below where you can get that guide. These are the EBL 3000 milliamp hour batteries, and we've done a couple of tests on these batteries in the past. So these are proven and working. This, you guys have probably seen before. This is a rechargeable speaker. So if we hold down the bottom part, it starts to come on blue, 
and that means it is working. So this is a powered speaker. It's got a couple of little battle scars on it. No big deal, it still works. Let's, uh, let's turn it back off and put it away. There will be a link for this down below as well. Just in case you do not want speakers, you don't wanna be offending everybody around you with Morse code dits and dahs. There is a set of headphones there and a nice headphone winder to keep them. And then we have the turtles, the two turtles, the red, which is the positive. This is 28 foot, this is 17 foot. So we have our radiator and our counterpoise and these two wire winders hold them up nice. And then we have some binding posts, which make them fit nicely into our binding post adapter, our Cobra head adapter, whatever you wanna call it. The KX1 radio and the KX PD1 Morse code paddle. This is an interesting paddle. A lot of people don't like this. It's, and Morse code paddles in general are feeling based and I can totally appreciate that. But I had to have the KX PD1 to go with the KX1. Had to have a match set or else, you know how that works. And it goes right into the bottom and screws in place. Let's go do it. Now the antenna wire is gonna be a little bit more difficult. I gotta find some way to get this thing up in the air. I am going to use a seven meter mast that I got from DX Commander. Fully unwound, pick the turtle up, and then I have this mast set up with an s beaner at the end and some kind of lanyard that I found somewhere on some HD, I have no idea. However, you can either use that or you can wind the end of the antenna element through the top of the mast, and then I just put it back through one more time, and that holds it in place. And we are all set. All right, so we tuned it up, and power level is four watts out, perfect. A different location and I need to test out if this thing will tune on all the bands that this radio can tune on. I have the counterpoise wire strung out across the ground which then goes over to the radio station here at the picnic table and then the antenna radiator goes up in the air. That is a 10 meter mast and I am cheating with my mast holder here. It's just built into the front of the trailer. Let's see if it tunes. Let's turn the battery pack on. Let's turn the radio on. This flickering that you see on the display is an artifact of the camera. It looks beautiful in person. And then that happens when it thinks that you're not looking anymore and wants to be shy. All right, so let's start at the low band. This is 10. And I wanna run a tuning cycle. So I'm gonna hold down menu and edit, which together make tune. Tuning runs, 5.2 watts out, and it says SWR is 1.0, fantastic. All right, let's change the band from 10 to 20, from 10 megahertz to 14 megahertz. There we go, tuned up, four watts out, SWR is 1.1, all right, power out is four watts. All right, next band, this is 80 meters. Let's tune this one up. Power out is one, so it's not very happy on 80 meters. That's asking a lot of this tuner. SWR is 9.9, .9, so I would not run there. So we would need to work on probably more wire for it to work on 80 meters, but 28 feet of wire is asking a lot. 7050. All right, three watts out. And 1.1 SWR. So I've got some links in the description down below for all the parts that we use to build this kit, the case, the two turtles, the speaker, and good luck on finding the KX1. Those are rare birds right now. This looks like it will tune 30, 20, and 40 without a problem. It definitely needs some help on 80. So. We'll work on that in a future video when we decide we need 80. But for now, I'm happy with three bands, and I think this is a pretty cool reproduction of the kit that we found. Leave some comments down below on what you think we can do to make some improvements on this kit. Otherwise, there's a video right here I think you'll enjoy next.
thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.